Hey guys, welcome back to the another video and in this video we are going to talk about JavaScript. This is going to be a four part JavaScript crash course. So this is going to be a long and an exciting journey. We will cover a lot of JavaScript syntax and fundamentals. So if you are a beginner and looking to start learning JavaScript programming, then I recommend you to watch all the four parts of this crash course and make the most out of it. If you are new, then please check out my other crash courses. I will add the links in the description below. Also make sure you subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the upcoming videos on JavaScript crash course. So let's get started. So we will go through some slides and understand some facts and theoretical stuffs about JavaScript. But in this quick introduction, I want to answer three frequently asked questions by beginners about JavaScript. And that is, what is JavaScript? What can you do with JavaScript? How JavaScript code runs? Let's start with the first question, what is JavaScript? JavaScript is a high level, just in time compiled programming language. Just in time means you don't need to compile your code before running it. It will be interpreted by the browser directly. Unlike Java, where if you want to run your code, then you need to compile it first with a program called compiler. And then you can run your code. Although Java is very different language and most beginners think they are same. But no, JavaScript and Java are completely different programming languages. JavaScript also confirms to ECMAScript specification. In fact, JavaScript is one of the implementation of ECMAScript specification. Although there are some other implementation as well like ActionScript, JScript, but they are not very popular as JavaScript. You can run JavaScript code on browser and server as well. We will see in a bit. Next JavaScript is a dynamic typed language. That means when declaring variables, you don't need to specify type like string, numbers, which we usually do in C, C++, Java, etc. You just declare a variable with a value and during runtime, the engine will decide the type according to the value. JavaScript is also multi-paradigm. You can write your code in many different ways. You can write object-oriented code or functional code, not unlike other languages where you need to write in a certain way. And that's why JavaScript is one of the most popular programming language. Here are some of the stats published by Stack Overflow where you can see JavaScript is on the top of the list and big companies like Twitter, Netflix, Facebook, Google and Amazon hires a lot of JavaScript developers every year as they have built a lot of applications entirely using JavaScript. Now let's see the second question. What can you do with JavaScript? You can choose a career as front-end development where you will build UI interfaces and will be using frameworks like React, Angular, Vue. Or you can choose a backend development where you will write server-side logic, deal with APIs, databases, and real-time chat application using Node.js, Express. And the third option, and the most popular one, is full-stack development, where with a single programming language, you can build both front-end and back-end, and that's the beauty of learning JavaScript. In today's world, JavaScript is all over the place. If you want to build web mobile applications or you want to build real time chat applications, you can also build desktop applications with Electron JS, which is JavaScript library of building desktop applications or even games. So now you must have realized how important it is to learn JavaScript. And the third question is how JavaScript code runs. Let's understand with a small example. You have a simple JavaScript function that gives a sum of two numbers. You don't need to worry about functions now. Uh, it's just a theoretical concept so that you can understand how this code execution happens. Now, when this application runs in the browser, the browser renders the JavaScript code with some JavaScript render engine. And these engine execute your JavaScript code line by line. For Chrome, we have V8 JavaScript engine. And for Mozilla, we have SpiderMonkey. There is another way of executing JavaScript code and that is Node.js, a runtime environment built on Chrome V8 engine for executing JavaScript outside your browser. So now you have good understanding of JavaScript. Let's see what are the topics we cover in this video. We will cover the basics of JavaScript syntax and fundamentals. 
We will also look on the variables, data types, operators and conditions. We will look on the arrays, objects, how we write functions, how we write loops, constructor functions and prototypes. And in the last, we will see for the window object, DOM manipulation, events and some feel of ES6. So let's jump into the code. All right, guys. So now we have a simple HTML document and first thing we are going to see is how we can add the JavaScript into our HTML document. So we can add JavaScript into our HTML document using the script tag. So I'm going to add a script tag here. All right. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'll just simply write an alert and I will write JS tutorial. And this will simply uh, give the browser alert uh, on the screen. So now if I save, you can see that there is an alert uh, saying JS tutorial. So, so this way you can add your JavaScript code, but uh, usually we never add script tag in the head section because if you have any error in your script tag, then the code execution will stop there itself and your HTML will not render on the screen. So we always uh, avoid adding the script tag on the head section and instead of that we add it in the body section. So we add the script tags at the bottom of the body. So here and the output will still be the same but it's, it's always recommended to have a separate JavaScript file and you link that JavaScript file into your HTML document. So we are going to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do, I'll just remove this alert and in the script tag, I can add a source and I'm going to give the path of my uh, script file. So currently I don't have any, so let's create a new JavaScript file. So I'll create a new folder. I'll name it a JS and inside the folder, I'm creating a new file and I'll name it as script.js. Okay. And now I will just link the file here. I'm going to give a path. It's in JS and it's in script.js. All right. So now we have linked the JavaScript file and now we don't want this HTML file anymore because we are not going to write any HTML for now. We, we are going to do everything uh, in the script file. So let's go to the script file. And now in the script file, if I alert again, so this time I'm going to write simple hello. Okay, and now if I save it, so now you can see that there is an alert on the browser with hello. So now let's see what are the ways we can actually output our JS code. So obviously alert is one of the way you can do it. And the next way you can do it, if you want to accept some input from the user, you can use prompt. And when I use a prompt, I'll just type what is your name. Okay. And I, I'll just comment the alert because now we don't want. And if I say me now, it's prompting me that give me your name. So it will take an user input. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say the page. And if I click, okay, nothing will happen because we are not doing anything with the user input. But if you want to see what is the user input, next way to output a JavaScript is the console and which is the most uh, developers, they use console to do debugging and to print any uh, data in the console. So let me add a console. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a console log here. And I'm going to add a console log so that I can log what the data or what the uh, input user has entered. All right. So now if I say the page and if I write, okay, then we can see it in the console, but how we go to the console. So to go to the console, it's very easy. You just have to do a right click. You click on the inspect. And inside the inspect, you can see the first step highlighted is the element, but you need to go to the console. So this is the browser console and in the browser console, you can see my name, the page here. And this is because we entered the page when it was prompted. So you can see that it's on the line two. The console is from the line two and this is our line two. So this is the console. So in console, I mean, you can log a lot of different things. So console log is one of the way just to log a simple data in your code. 
so I will just add I am in script file so when I do this it will simply print it on the console but console has more methods I mean it's just not the log method but you can also have more methods so in this one I'm going to do is console dot error if you want to console some error on the console you use console dot error and when I say I will write I am an error and you can see that now this is is the error you have a different visualization when it's an error it's, it's going to be have a red color and there's a cross mark the, similarly we can have a warning as well if you want to output the warning then we can have a console warn and I will write I am a warning and now you can see for warning you have a yellow triangle and then it is the different color so this means you can see it's a warning so apart from the warning you can also in uh, log some normal information so i will add console.info and this is going to give me a normal text on the screen i am a info and it's going to give me a normal same. So info is more or like similar to the log, but from the name we understand if we need to output some information, we use console info. If we just need to do some output on the console, then we can use console log. If we want to output the error, we can use error. And if we want to output warning, we can use the warn. But these are not limited only four methods. There are more, uh, I mean, you need to check, but uh, I'm going to cover only four. So I, I'll just going to remove this and the next thing we are going to talk about are variables. So in JavaScript, you can declare a variable in three different types. So earlier it was where, but when ES6 came, the ES2015, we say uh, in ES25, they introduced let and const. So let's see what actually this where is, what is this let and what is this constant and what actually the difference between them, which one to use when and how to use. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to declare a simple variable x equals to five. All right. And then next I'm going to declare a let y is equals to 10. And the other one is I'm going to declare a const z is equals to 15. All right, so I have declared three variables. And so let's me console them first. So I'll write a console log and I'm write x. And I'm just going to copy paste this for y and z. And you can see the outputs here. But uh, if I want to change the value of z let me assign z is equals to 20 now and if i save you can see i'm getting an error and that error is because z is declared as constant and you cannot change the value of the constant so for the constant is clearly a difference that constants are something which has to be constant throughout your application the values cannot be changed so you declare all the variables as constant and you only change this constant to let when actually you know that this variable has to be changed late execution of the application so in that case you just change the const to the let but now what is the difference between let and variable so when you declare something as variable or where it has a global scope that variable will go to the window object we're going to see what is the window object later just need to understand that when you declare any variable as where then it, it is uh, having a global scope. But when you declare a variable with the let, it will have a block level scope. So to make you understand the block level scope, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to have a small if condition. And if it is true, then only I'm going to print the console of X and console of Y. All right. And when I do, so I'm just going to comment this out now. All right. So when I do this, you can see that I, I simply get the same output because the condition is satisfied. It's true and you will get X and Y. 
I can declare a let y is equals to 5 here and I'm going to declare a where x is equals to 6 and if I save this time then the value of x and y will obviously it will change because I have overwrite the values which were previously declared but when I want to print these two outside of this and in this case I'm going to comment this out all right so when I print this outside the block of the my if condition you can see that I get and for the line number 17 which is the X I still can access X outside the if condition but for Y I'm not able to access Y outside the if condition and that is because when you declare a variable as let it will have a block level scope that means the variable Y will only be available within this block if you try to access is outside the block you won't be able to access it but if but on the other hand if you declare a variable as where you can access it anywhere in your application because it's going to be added as a global scope it's not a good practice to add every variable to a global scope because then your global scope will get polluted and your application will behave uh, not exactly how you want because you will never know what value of the variable is changed at what time. So it's better to use constant everywhere but if something is not being fulfilled with the constant you change it to the let but you avoid using variables. So these are the variables where let and constant. All right. So the next thing I'm going to sh show you is the operators. So let's see what are the operators. So JavaScript has a simple operators like you have in other uh, programming languages like you can have let me add a console dot log and I'm going to simply add two plus two. All right. So these are some of the arithmetic operators and let me go to console back and if I add two plus two is four if uh, I can use the multiplication it's going to give me four I can use sub subtraction it's going to give me zero and I can use divide it's going to give me one so these are the arithmetic operators but apart from these arithmetic operators JavaScript also have an assignment operator and the assignment operator is if I write const x equals to 10 that means the equal to is an assignment operator and using the assignment operator we actually assign a value to a variable so this is the assignment operator and if I print this constant then I will get 10 uh, apart from the assignment operator you can also use an increment operator so for increment I need to change the value let me change it to where and you add plus plus so when you add plus plus it is going to the actual value and when you do the next print then it's going to give you an 11 because it is incremented by one so if you want that first the value should be incremented and then it should be printed then you can add the plus plus here and I'll just remove this so in this case it's going to give me 11 all right similarly you can do the decrement operator so minus minus so first is going to take the current value it will do a minus minus to it that means it's going to decrement it by one and then it's going to print the value so when I save it I'm going to get nine all right so these were the operators we usually use in the JavaScript the basic operators next thing we will see the data types in JavaScript so JavaScript has primitive data types and non-primitive data types. In the primitive data types, we have the string, we have number, we have boolean, we have null, and we have undefined. We also have symbol, but uh, symbol is not which is generally uh, used in I mean I have never used symbol by myself in, in, in the coding so we, we are not going to discuss symbol because it's not one which is being frequently used so let me assign some variable I'm going to give a name of 
of the page all right then i'm going to have an age as 29 okay then i'm going to have let is programmer i'm going to say it true yes i am a programmer then i'm going to say no value for no value i'm going to give null and then i'm going to give a let un assign and to unassign i'm not going to give any value to unassign all right so now if we want to see that the name is what is the type of the name then we are going to do console.log and if i write type of name so if i write a type of name then it should give me string because uh, i i have assigned the value uh, string to the name so in javascript you you don't need to specify the data type you, you simply specify the value and when actually the code is executed the javascript engine on the runtime it will decide that it's a string or it's a boolean or it's a number so if i save it now it's going to give me a string which is actually name is a string so if i want to see about this then this should give me a boolean and yes it's giving me boolean so for for the numbers we in javascript we don't have uh, floats or decimal we only have numbers so if if i have here let me give you here uh, first i will give age i'm sorry we should not declare a variable with a capital so if i write if I want to see age, it's going to give me a number. But if I if I write minus one, then also it's going to give me a number. Or if I write 0 0.5, it will still be a number because JavaScript doesn't have floats or decimals. It treats everything as numbers. So let me show you if, if we see the type of no value then it's not going to give me a null it's going to give me an object because type of null is object and you don't ask me why why the type of null is object is actually a gotcha uh, so it's an exception in javascript that when you try to check the type of a variable which is having a null value it's going to give you an object so let me check for the type of unassigned and I haven't assigned a value to unassigned variable. So whenever you declare a variable by default, you have an undefined value in it. And when you add the value to it, then it takes the value. Otherwise, it will always give you an undefined as its value. All right. So, so this is why we say that JavaScript is a dynamic type language because uh, you don't need to specify the type of the variables when you declare the variables. So if you want to have a type while declaration like let name is, should be a string, then you should use TypeScript instead of JavaScript because TypeScript is a typed language. And when you declare variables in TypeScript, you need to specify the type of the variable you use. So that, that's an another topic of discussion. But I, I just wanted to say you that, yes, I mean, TypeScript is the superset of JavaScript. That means all the features of JavaScript will be there in the TypeScript. Plus TypeScript uh, offers you some additional features. All right, so these were the data types. And now next, let's see about strings and string methods. So what I'm going to do is uh, I, I'll just declare a first name. And I'm going to give first name as the page. All right, then I'm going to give a last name. And I'm going to give a last name as Malvia. And I'm also give, uh, going to create one more variable. I'm going to give languages. And the languages will be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I simply created three variables and assigned some string values. One thing I want to show that if you want to define a string, you can also define a string as let name is equals to new string 
and I'm going to give as the page Malvia. It's also one of the way of uh, declaring a string, but uh, we, we never use this uh, constructor uh, object or the constructor function to define the string. Because now when you see that if, if I'm going to write a console dot log and if I want to have a type of if I write a type of first name, it's going to give me a string. But if I write the type of name, it's going to give me an object and not the string. So performance wise, if you check on the performance, uh, it's always recommended to use uh, the simple way and not the constructor function to declare string. Uh, it's not only for the string, you, you can do it for numbers, booleans, and for all the primitive data type we saw, you can do it. All right, so we, I just remove it because we don't want this part. And now if I do this first name, then I'm going to get string. So there are some of the string methods which you can use on the string. Like if I want to know the length of it, I can simply write length and I can get the length of my string. Okay. You can also use concatenate. Uh, so if I want to concatenate, then I can use concatenate method and then uh, I can use last name. So this is going to concatenate. And the other way you, if you want to concatenate is uh, you can use, it is my first name is, then if you want to concatenate it with the variable, then you, then you put a plus sign here. Okay. And then you add your variable first name, and then you want to add a string again, then you add a plus. Now you add a string here, my last name is you add a plus and you write a last name and this is going to give that my first name is the page my last name is the page but there is a better way of writing using a template literal and that es6 way is uh, it's very easy you write console.log and you use backticks and in the backticks you can simply write my first name is and when you have to uh, have a variable value here you add a dollar sign then you add a curly base and you enter the variable name and then you simply write my name is the page and my last name is you can dollar and then you can add your last name and it's going to give me the same way so this is a much a uh, better way of writing you, you avoid all the plus signs and then quotes and again plus sign and again quotes so now let's see some of the string methods which we can use if you want to have a substring of the complete string then you can do that as well so there are some of the methods in the string which you can uh, play around with the strings so what i'm going to do i'm going to have a language and i'm going to do a substring Okay, and on the substring, from where I want to have the substring, so I need to give the first argument as a start. So I'm going to give it from one, and if I save it, it is going to start from the one. That means the index of h is zero, the index of t is one, and I need a substring which is starting from one, so that's why it's starting from t m l. And you can also add the second argument, these starting from the one, how many characters you want more. So if I add that from one, I want five characters more. So that is going to take that from one, which is one, two, three, four, five. And the fifth one is a comma and then the space. So if I write a six here, I'm going to get uh, the string till C. So this is the substring. So there is a similar method called substring and in that substring let's go and check the substring so i'm going to add language dot and i'm going to add the substring but in the substring you you add the first and the last and it only pick the values in between not including the last one so let me give you one comma six so when i give one comma six that means start from the first index 
and go to the sixth index but don't include the sixth one so that means if I start from the first index which is T and C is the sixth one in substring the last index is not included that means C will not be included here so this is the difference between sub str where you have a start and you have a number of characters as a second argument but in substring you have a start and you have an end but you don't include the end in the result next i want to show you is the split which is very useful and we, we often use a split so like i have languages and i need to split based on the comma and when i split it I'm going to get an, a new array of strings. And now you can see that I got a new array of strings. All right. And one thing I want to show you also do a replace. So if I add a console log and I'm what I'm going to do, I'm going to add languages dot replace. And I want to replace the HTML with HTML5. All right. And if I save now, you can see the HTML string is replaced with HTML5. All right, so, so these were some of the string and string methods. All right, guys, so we will take a break here and we'll see you in the part two of our JavaScript crash course. But before you go, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.